Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial on the Spectralis 2. I'm going to be working on creating a basic song, um, going through my typical workflow for creating these songs. Um, please bear with it at the beginning. It might seem very complex as I try and go through the routing of the oscillators for the digital uh, synthesizer. So let's start by uh, choosing a new song. So I'm going to go to my songs and choose a song that I've never used before, and that would be track 26. The first set of tracks uh, or songs would be 1 through 16, and when you hold the shift down when you have the song button pressed, uh, then you can choose your tracks. I'm already on tw track 20, uh, song 26, but we'll push it again, and it'll ask us if we want to load that, and we say yes. Uh, typically, it has to load some samples. Um, you may or may not have samples on your uh, Spectralis, but uh, you know that that'll just be dependent on your unit. So when I'm writing a track, um, the first thing that I do is work with the um, I work with the digital oscillators. Um, so right now, my whole setup is connected to an external uh, synthesizer. I'm using the uh, Access Virus right now just uh, as a MIDI controller so that I can press notes. So you won't see that on screen, but you can hear that uh, I can press notes. Uh, I think that's actually quite crucial with the Spectralis uh, because uh, you can use the play button. So if I'm on my analog synth part and uh, you push the play, you have, uh, you have a keyboard, but I've never really been able to figure out how to use that when creating a sequence of notes. So the first thing to do would be um, making sure that you're on the analog synth part, and that would be uh, this number 12. You can see it says analog synth on it. And I set up the routing first. So that's uh, the set routing button. I go there. And what you'll see is that uh, with your monophonic synth uh, part, uh, you have four different oscillators, VCO 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they're listed in different trigger groups. There's trigger group 1, 2, and 3. And I typically try to set up uh, everything the first time I'm on the first uh, pattern that I'm working with so that uh, I don't get, uh, sometimes you'll hear sound like a, clicking sound if you switch part or switch uh, patterns in the song and uh, there's a different settings in them so I like to set that up right away so I don't run into that um, so you've got on your uh, in the set routing page one of three is just the oscillator trick uh, where they'll set up in the trigger groups uh, page two which uh, is where the trigger groups that would get activated you've got your multi-mode filter your low pass noise and uh, the filter bank, and then how they respond with the note priority on the third page. So one thing that I typically would do is just set VCO1 to trigger group 1, and then have the low pass filter with trigger group 1. Uh, and then let's say VCO2, you push the encoder knob, and now it's on uh, going to be activated by trigger group 2 and VCO3 will be trigger group two, and we could just have VCO4 trigger group three. So now my multi-mode filter is usually set to trigger group two, and then I'll set my noise and um, filter bank to trigger group three. So now what you'll, uh, with mine at least, uh, if you go to your sequencer because you need to go to the right page, um, usually you'll sit at sequencer group number one, now I still have default settings up, so these are actually um, the different uh, sequen uh, sequencer lines um, are set up so that 1 through, I believe, 10 uh, deal with the filter bank, activating the filter bank. And so I go to trigger group 11, and I, I would have guessed most people have it set up this way. Trigger group 11, or I'm sorry, uh, sequencer line 11 deals with trigger group 1. So right now if I press the note, you wouldn't hear anything because I know that I haven't actually set uh, oscillator one to route through that. So if we go to the oscillator wave, VCO oscillator wave, um, go to page five and you'll see that oscillator one isn't being activated or isn't, uh, there's no volume being fed through the low pass filter. So now 
as I turn that up, you'll hear that. Um, now I can fix all the other ones too. So if I go to page four, the multi-mode filter, see oscillator one is still routed through that. So I turn that off and same with oscillator three. Um, let me go back and make sure that I set that up. Uh, actually I had a VCO two and three set through that. So I'll go back and turn up oscillator three. So now they're both going through the multi-mode filter and the filter bank vo volume, that would be oscillator four. Okay. So I'll exit, and now I'm on the sequencer line 11, which deals with trigger group 1. And you could just start put placing, uh, pressing down on these buttons below the encoder knobs, and if you just push play, you'll hear clicking. Um, that's because the note that's being set is uh, a very low note. I can just move that up and set them up, or even higher. And you could change the length. And if you press down, you'll see there's a caret there. It means there's more in that setting. And you can set them all to a length of one. So it'd be one sixteenth of a note. And you could go on and do that for all of them. But uh, typically when I'm writing a track, uh, I won't, won't write it that way. I will hold down a note on, on my external keyboard. So what you do is you'll actually, uh, so on the first note, you just find the note that you want. So you hold down this encoder knob, and it will learn the note. So you can kind of see the pitch that it's choosing. So we'll stick with that note. Okay, so you have just a basic um, sound going on, or a basic sequence. So now I would want to modify how uh, the oscillator and the filter sounds. So that's the, you've got your filter section and your oscillator section. So I'll go through and um, edit my oscill uh, the filter. So the low pass filter is associated with trigger group one. So that's what's being activated alongside oscillator one. So you have your volume envelope. Um, you can set that to whatever you want. What becomes more dynamic is when you mess with the cutoff. And you might want to mess with uh, your VCA. So this is your envelope for um, uh, your amplifier or the amp envelope. Um, so you can see the volume envelope generator. So you can change that so you could basically not hear anything or uh, you, can, you can mess with the filter itself. Now we could go to uh, sequencer line 12, which is with uh, deals with trigger group two. Now this, remember, had in my track um, oscillators two and three associated with the multi-mode filter. And I'm gonna turn on the low pass filter. Now I'm gonna have to go into the settings for the multi-mode filter because I know that uh, it's not routed it's right now it's routed through the low pass filter. So if I hold down a note, you'll hear it, but only when the low pass filter was activated. But it wouldn't be activated on its own. So if I turn that off, if I stop it for a second, we can go through and um, fix the routing for that so that we'll go through the, the bus itself. And if I, I'm going back to the VCO settings and changing the waveform for both of those. And you could change the tuning and change their fine tuning. And now since we're on sequencer line 12, you can start um,
Now I'll change uh, the, the length of each of these notes, or all of them. So you can actually adjust each individual note that you have on your sequence. One thing I didn't do was set the um, trigger group note priority. Usually I set this to the last triggered. Um, doesn't typically matter, but uh, you'll notice down that you don't actually hear the second part. Um, and I believe that's because the velocity sent to zero. For some reason when you switch from a high note priority to something else, uh, it no longer recognizes the notes without adjusting the velocity. So you can just set the notes to the velocity of 63. And that, well, doesn't sound too good, but you get the, the point. So the first thing that you wanted to do was set up the routing for your oscillators uh, for the digital uh, monophonic synth parts. Um, I erased all of those notes and uh, we could come up with something a little nicer or doesn't really matter but um, I'll probably just set some new notes. Okay, so we have something basic here. You can go now and work with drums. Uh, you got your groove edit section, that's here. And we're gonna be working with the kick part first. So uh, I push this encoder knob, which will choose all. And now we can just pick um, anything that we want there. Uh, sometimes it'll have to load new um, samples. So that one's kind of hard to hear. You can turn up the volume, VCA level. So you've got a basic kick. It's This is a obviously a very simple beat. And you could lay down a snare. So it says snare. Right now mine's set to other. I click all so that I can see all the different patches or samples. Uh, and I'll press on my other uh, keyboard kind of while I'm searching. Okay, so I've got a simple beat going. Now I can go back to my other uh, sequencer line, which is trigger group number two, and see. You know, if I'm not really feeling how it sounds, I can start modifying that. So now I'm going into the envelope generator for the um, multi-mode filter. And have to make sure that uh, uh, it's modified by. So we ha we need to to adjust the amplitude of that uh, envelope generator. So let's uh, we can turn the effects on for just the multi-mode filter and that's effects one or effects send and let's turn the feed down
And it sounds a bit too loud, so you can go back uh, and reduce the volume uh, that the VCOs are going to the filter or turn, off, turn down the filter uh, volume itself, which would be in the bus. So if we go back to the drums, now you could, you could bring in a simple hi-hat. So what you can do is kind of press down all of them and you'll start hearing that. Turn down the volume a bit. Uh, another thing you can do in there is you've got the velocity for them. Sometimes to get a different, um, to get variation, I'll turn the volume down and you can, you can adjust those ind independently. You can also go into the uh, panning and use an LFO to modify the panning for that. And go over to the LFO section and change the wave shape, uh, the depth, and the rate. So now we could go to. Um, so if I hit select, we've got our desynth parts, which the digital synth. This is really a sample-based synthesizer, and you can change. You can. Uh, what I do is I hit select uh, synth one, two, or three, and then I hit the uh, VCO os oscillator wave, and this lets you choose which uh, sound you want. So here, this is a pulse. And with this, um, usually you record motifs. Uh, um, that would be this button, but I'm not going to do that right now. What we'll do is actually do a sequence edit. So I go all the way to the end of the sequencer lines and create a new one. So it says create, yes. And we go to our target so that we can target a new part. And I'll go over to desynth, and it's play and the, the note. So click on that, and it's like, what, what part do you want to record to? I'll have desynth one. So now we go to function, which is where you can actually uh, place the notes. And I can change the length of individual parts. And we could actually uh, send uh, the f uh, send the effects to that part. So that was uh, synth one. And actually you could go into the drum part and start making even something simple like this a little more complex by changing the length of each part. So the length is set to 8-8, eight, eight. so you could change the, uh, your bass kick to 7-8 to and your snare to 10-8. Now it wouldn't really matter for the uh, hi-hat because it'll kind of sound the same no matter what I did to it right now. But maybe for that, we can adjust the resolution and start adding some, some more dynamics to it there. And you can start coming up with something a little more complex pretty quickly. So the one last thing I haven't done is uh, messed with um, trigger group three, which would be line 13 on my unit and you can see it'll say trigger uh, trigger group 3 here. Now we could set up a new one just in case yours is different. You go all the way to the end of your function or set a new target, create a new line and we go to asynth, global, trigger group 1, 2, or 3 and you click on 3 and now we have trigger group 3.
Now we can't hear anything right now. I'm pressing down on the notes. Um, if you recall, if you go back to the set routing, you'll see that it's trigger group three uh, for oscillator four. And that's going, um, the noise is also being triggered and so is the uh, fixed filter bank. So I go over to the tune all. I know that this one was set very strangely um, in the default settings. So oscillator four, I just set the course tune to zero and the pitch scaling to 12. And I will go through and see the, oscill the oscillator is going through um, the filter bank. And with the filter bank, I believe, um, I have to remember exactly, I don't use the filter bank quite as often. Um, so the filter bank is going through Um, what I haven't done is actually opened up any of the, uh, the filters. And right now what you're hearing is the um, envelope noise volume. So that's what's going through there. And now you can kind of hear You can start to hear the, the part. And I'm gonna turn the volume up for that part. And you can hear it has a very uh, nasal sound to it, which is kind of one of the benefits of this fixed filter bank, you're able to open up individual um, uh, uh, different frequencies uh, in this uh, filter bank. So the low pass, high pass, and then uh, certain uh, frequencies within, within that. So let's quickly just uh, add one more part, which uh, is, will, be th will be that uh, trigger group three. Now, if you recall, we did set up um, we set trigger group three now to uh, sequencer line 19. So we'll push play. So you can hear those going right now. So what I'll do is I'll change the length of all those parts. So now, if I wanted to create some more dynamic to this part, let me turn the volume down just a bit. What I can do is actually turn the volume down on all the different uh, filter banks. So, or on all the different frequencies. So you'll start to not here, oscillator four. So the reason I might want to do that is we can actually sequence the filter bank, bank with different frequencies to create something even more dynamic. So those were set uh, uh, for sequencer line one through 10. So let's try, let's start with sequencer line seven. You can change the uh, envelope type so we'll just start with decay for, uh, this one is 1770 Hertz. So you can't hear anything quite yet, but when we start messing with more of them and changing the lengths, you might start to hear So I'll just go through and and start editing different sequencer lines here. So now oscillator four will start triggering and uh, you'll start hearing it going through each individual frequency.
so one thing I'll also do is turn the I'll, I'm gonna affect the uh, the cutoff and the uh, resonance of the fixed filter bank so you can you can start to hear that one thing you can also do is pan the different um, parts you push the pan button and then within the fixed the filter bank and you can start hearing them coming through different uh, sides so if we turn the effects in um, actually with the filter bank you can have them go through the effects one So let's just say I don't quite like the sound that I'm getting for the uh, uh, oscillator 4. Well, that wasn't much better, but the general concept is uh, the same. You know, you can easily change the notes. And just remember that I am pressing down on a, on a separate keyboard that you can't see on screen. And that's a basic uh, run through of creating a song. It usually takes the most time at the beginning uh, when you're routing your different parts, uh, especially trying to understand trigger groups, uh, the VCOs, how these four oscillators uh, can be routed through to different trigger groups, what trigger groups mean in the first place, and how you are activating an oscillator while you're also activating filters. Uh, sometimes you can, you could even route an oscillator through a filter that is sequenced on a different trigger group so that your oscillator gets triggered on one and your filter gets triggered on another and then you'll hear them uh, differently than if they were triggered at the same time and that might be something you might be interested in. Uh, it, it seems very complex but I think once you you get the general feel for how everything's laid out and how it all goes together um, it becomes much uh, simpler to uh, work with. Um, this, I, I, I think, is one of the better uh, sequencers out there. Uh, Electron Gear is also really good, and clearly there are a lot of new units out on the market that uh, I haven't had a chance to use. But uh, people often ask me about Roland, uh, the MC series, and the, they just never seem quite um, as dynamic uh, as the Spectralis. Uh, gear. Uh, so anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I apologize about all the uhs and ums. It's, I don't have a script that I'm working off of. I'm just trying to go through and create these uh, tutorials to help people who are interested. So take care.